Fiat is finally bringing a real adult car to the U.S. market. The 500X invites mature drivers to slip into something more comfortable than the tiny Tador Cinquecento, the toll-like city car that relaunched the brand in America in 2010 and offers a driving experience far more engaging than the dowdy 500 liters ever imagined. The X is so much nicer than the L, in fact, that we'd suggest the latter's days should be numbered, its only advantage being a little bit more interior room. So far, Fiat's return to the American market has followed the trail blazed by many. Start with a small car offering lots of personalization options then expand the product lineup while hewing to a single design theme. Next year sometime, the Italians are going to break off in a new direction with the 124 Spider developed alongside the Mazda Miata, but for now every Fiat in this country is still a 500. The X could be the best yet, it certainly broadens the brand's appeal to American drivers who need more than minimalist transportation. The 500X actually looks good even as the design cues you to the pretense that this is just another variation on the original. It's not. Built on a new global platform the same one that underpins the Jeep Renegade, the 500X was drawn by designers who got their sums right and, for the first time since the brand's revival here, had the North American market in mind from the get-go. The stance and proportions we admired at auto shows holds up and looks even better out in the real world of traffic. Both outside and in, it looks to be built to a higher standard and of nicer materials than the 500 liters, if the pre-production models we just drove in and around Los Angeles are indicative of the cars that should arrive in U.S. dealerships in May. Not a stranger in this land. The chassis is shared with the Renegade and the drivetrains are familiar FCA hardware, leaving only the tweaking, tuning, and equipping to distinguish the 500X. The base model uses the familiar pop trim designation and is powered by the 160 horsepower 1.4 liter Mulchier Turbo 4 that serves in the Fiat 500 Abarth, mated to a standard 6 speed manual gearbox. The POP is the only 500X offering a clutch pedal, and it has no options beyond your choice of colors, the 9-speed automatic and 2.4-liter 4-cylinder that comes standard on all other trim levels are also optional on the POP. Like VW with its Golf Sport Wagon, Fiat equates self-shifting with a hair shirt approach to motoring, if you want to row your own, you obviously wouldn't want, say, a bigger touchscreen or a heated steering wheel. The marketers say the take rate on manuals is only 1 to 3 percent, but that's a self-fulfilling prophecy with packaging like this. If you can't get navigation or heated seats or a backup camera or upgraded audio with a stick shift that will pretty effectively kill sales of the stick shift. We wish Fiat had mirrored Mini's path in this instance. The countryman can be had with a manual even when optioned to the max. Regardless, the vast majority 95%, by FCA estimates of Fiat 500X models will be in one of the four other trim levels, Easy, Trekking, Lounge, and Trekking Plus. Five trim levels sounds like a lot, but most of the differences boil down to cosmetics. All but the pop use the 180 horsepower 2.4 liter Tiger Shark 4 cylinder that makes more power but less torque than the smaller 1.4 liter turbo. Fiat estimates that about 40% of buyers will choose the optional $1,900 all-wheel drive system with rear axle disconnect. It's the same as is used in the Renegade, but Fiat won't get the more capable 4B for equipment that Jeep offers in its Trailhawk version. So the two trekking iterations have external and internal design cues meant to evoke off-road worthiness, but it's all just window dressing, at least in our market the 500X will be sold in some 100 countries. The easy and lounge versions bear a closer resemblance to the little sink cento with a similar front fascia. Inside, all the 500X models look, feel, and work better than previous US Fiat's. Drive like an Italian, we wound up spending most of our brief driving time in a front-drive 500X lounge. 
It had the optional rear park assist and blind spot monitoring with cross-path detection and stickered out at $26,100. Other high-tech option offerings include Lane Sense, which delivers a steering torque input if it senses you're leaving the lane, and forward collision warning plus that will first warn of an impending collision and then apply the brakes to mitigate. Tick every box and you get up to about $33,000. A healthy margin over the pop model's starting price of $20,900. The car we drove had 17-inch wheels, premium cloth upholstery, heated seats and steering wheel, and the largest, 6.5-inch Uconnect touchscreen with navigation there are 5.0 and 3.5-inch versions as you move down the ladder. It was a pleasant, comfortable car that we'd gladly consider for a long trip. Even though we wondered how much better it could be if it lost all the crossover pretensions and just sat a few inches lower, like a VW Golf or a Ford Focus. When our driver out took us out into twisting California Canyon back roads, we pushed it as hard as we might have a Golf and found a more engaging car than we'd expected. So of course we had to drive harder still. Fiat tuned the suspension for a bit more roll control and crisper responses than did Jeep, and it shows with more spirited handling when the road gets challenging. The 500X rotates nicely without a lot of understeer, considering that we're talking about a microt here. The chassis feels stout and the suspension delivered a satisfying sense of control even as it absorbed road irregularities with little disruption. There's a useful dial on the console that offers three choices, Auto, Sport, and Traction Plus modes. It alters the transmission shift points, steering effort, and throttle response. The suspension isn't affected, though, so ride quality doesn't change. The ride was good considering the relatively short wheelbase, but a brief drive in a car with the larger, 18-inch wheels felt jonesy. We'd still rather have been in a Golf or similar on the challenging roads, and the Tiger Shark 4's buzzy drone isn't exactly thrilling, even if it did deliver the power when we wanted it. In its auto mode the 9-speed rushes up shifts to maximize fuel economy, but when pressed in sport mode, it selected and held the right gear most of the time and shifted promptly and fairly crisply. The overall experience can feel a little vague in the default mode at freeway speeds, but dialing up sport makes it all crisper and more rewarding. We'd likely drive most of the time that way if the fuel economy penalty weren't too bad. There's a clear difference in how often the car chooses, say, fifth gear in sport when it would be in seventh ordinarily. From the performance side, Manual operation with the lever wasn't really rewarding enough to warrant the effort, but it might be useful for the hypermiler. We might wish for more steering feel, but there was good responsiveness and oncender weight in sport mode. We worked the brakes pretty hard and they responded reliably and predictably, they never made us say, wow but never caused a worry, either. Now that automakers have figured out they can sell small hatchbacks to Americans by calling them crossovers, and have incentive to do so as fuel economy regulations grow more stringent, there's a rush into this market segment. Consider, when we first met the Buick Encore 3 model years ago, there was hardly anything to measure it against. Now there are half a dozen competitors and more on the way. Which means Fiat isn't quite on the bleeding edge here but it's running out ahead of some key contenders. Honda's Fit-based HRV and Mazda's CX-3 R2 that could well bring more driveline refinement than the 500X, but there's enough driving spirit and sophistication in the Fiat that you'll want to compare equipment levels and pricing closely before making a choice among these subcompact crossovers.